Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box, and today I have an apple harvest cookie tutorial for you. I'm gonna show you how to make a whole bunch of really cute cookies to celebrate this fun fall season. To go along with this tutorial, you can find the apple harvest cookie decorating kit on flowerbox.com. This kit has the essential cutters featured in today's videos. It also has a really cute new scribe design with a donut on it, and it has the brush and tool holder a new uh, contraption from the cookie countess so check out that kit online in today's tutorial we're going to be taking a look at using royal icing to create beautiful dimension on our cookies like the apple cart and the bushel of apples we're getting creative with our cookie cutters so it'll be fun to show you how to make the apple butter jar and also our bushel of apples using a popcorn cookie cutter and because it wouldn't be an apple harvest without a few apple treats i'm also going to show you how to make this cute caramel apple cookie. So let's cookie it up. I'm using my favorite apple cookie cutter in this tutorial and in this apple harvest cookie decorating kit. And I'm going to start off with a simple design. I'm outlining the cookie using piping icing and tip number two. And now I'm going to generously flood in that cookie using the red 10 second flood icing. For a review on icing consistencies, check out the link to the icing video in the status below. I'm using a wet on wet technique to add the polka dots to the apple. So I'm using the ivory flood icing and I'm spacing out those polka dots to create that interesting design on the apple. Once that apple has a chance to dry, I'm going to pipe a leaf and a stem using the green and brown icing. Flood those in and allow those to dry and pipe just a simple detail to finish off this design. Now if you want, you can also add a leaf. I'm using tip number 352, and this just adds a little pop of dimension, bringing that leaf into the foreground. This is a cute and totally doable cookie. Now here's another cookie design I'm using, the same cookie cutter, and I'm going to outline the center of the cookie using ivory piping icing. Now this is like the cookie has been sliced open, so we're going to flood this in and we'll be adding some seeds in just a bit. I like to pipe and outline these large icing areas, but now after this section has a chance to dry, I'm going to use my flood icing only to add the color for the apple skin. There's no need to also pipe this area. It's just too small and using a gentle squeeze on your flood icing will fill that area in just fine. Once that has a chance to dry, again, you can add that piped leaf and stem. For the seeds, I'm using a dark brown icing and I'm just piping a little heart shape just to make this a little cute and interesting. It's always fun to take those details and give them a little twist. Let's take a look at this caramel apple. Now I also used this caramel apple in my new cookie decorating book, The Crafted Cookie, and I did a Halloween version of this cookie. So if you haven't checked that out, you can find the book on flowerbox.com. But let me show you how to make this apple harvest version. I'm using a caramel colored piping icing to outline the caramel section a tulip red to outline the apple, and a light brown to outline the stick on the apple. For a full list of icing colors featured in this tutorial, definitely check out the blog post linked below, and I'll give you an estimate of how much of each icing color to make and a list of the icing colors I'm using in this project. So now I'm just flooding in those sections, first the apple, and I'm adding some highlights just to give the cookie a little bit of shine and interest.
I'm keeping these details super simple because we're gonna have a little bit more labor once we get into the apple cart. I'm just adding a little drip of caramel at the bottom of this cookie and then I'm piping some sprinkles using the red, the green, and the gold so that these sprinkles coordinate with the colors on the other cookies in this set. This cookie is almost done. We're just gonna add another little hint of texture using that 352 leaf tip at the top of the apple. Now let's take a look at this bushel of apples. I love this cookie because it is using a popcorn cookie cutter. So this is great if you're doing any award show cookie sets or sleepover cookie sets. Um, you can turn this into a bucket of popcorn, but today we're using this to create that bushel of apples. So I've outlined and flooded the cookie using the light brown icing, and then to create the illusion of those planks of wood that make up that barrel, I'm using the ivory icing to create those wet on wet vertical lines. Let's start working on these apples. These take a couple of phases because I want to let these flood icing dots dry before we come back in and flood more. So there's really no specific way to do this. I'm just adding dots of the flood icing to the background of the cookie using the three colors of apples, the tulip red, I'm using a pastel mint green, and also a gold flood icing to make these apples. Once I make the first layer and allow that to dry for at least, I would say 20 minutes or so, I'm ready to go back in and add more apples. Now the key to making this design successful is to make sure the apples that are freshly flooded don't bump into another freshly flooded apple. That'll keep these apples looking distinct and round and keep them from looking like one big solid blob. <laughs> Once you have a good amount of apples, and for me, it took three dries in front of the fan just to fill in this section of the cookie, I'm using a light brown piping icing, and I'm just adding some stems on just a few of the apples. You don't have to hit all of them, just a few on the top, just to bring those apples to the foreground. Now this cookie is almost done. We're going to finish off the barrel with tip number 44. That pipes that quick wide stripe using a dark brown icing and we'll add two little nails using the ivory icing to finish off this really cute and fun design. Let's take a look at my favorite cookie from this set. This actually might be my favorite cookie I've decorated this year. This was so much fun to design. I'm using the lemonade cart to create this really cute apple cart. So if you haven't checked out that lemonade tutorial from this summer, go ahead. I'm using that same cutter and I'm setting off the awning on the cart using icing dots. I start with a dot in the center two dots on either end and then I space two dots inside of those just to give myself some guidelines for piping those six scallops. I'm piping that in the red icing color but the top I'm going to pipe using the ivory because I'm going to make this awning two-tone and that's why the outline is two different colors. Let's plan out the cart area. I'm using a dark brown icing and I'm piping three sections on the cart that's going to hold the apples. And then the lower section I'm piping using the light brown. Filling in this awning is with flood icing only. I'm not using any piping icing as I fill in these two sections. So I start with filling in the base of the awning using the red to fill in the scallops. And then I want to generously flood in the ivory. I didn't allow any dry time between those colors because I really do want them to settle flat against each other. 
Now before I pop this in front of the fan, I'm going to use my red flooding icing to add those little mini polka dots on the top. I'm flooding in the light brown sections, the base of the cart and also the handle of the cart. And I'm piping in the wood section that holds the awning on the top of the cart. Notice I'm using my flood icing for these tiny areas. It's just a little quicker than using piping and flooding and it results in less cracks and craters. Now before I pop this cookie in front of the fan, I wanna add my first layer of apples. This is the same as when I'm creating that apple bushel. So I'm just going to add these apples in layers. I'm trying to keep the apples spaced out and not touching each other because I want them to stay nice and round. But if two of them do touch, you can wiggle your scribe into that section and just remove a little icing to reshape that apple. Now remember, we are going to be layering more dots on top, so it's not essential that they're perfect, but it is helpful if you clean things up just a little bit. I'm going to keep adding apples. I found that I needed to dry this cookie in front of the fan and add apples three times before I had a nice full apple cart. Once all of those apples are added, it's time to pipe the details. Using the dark brown icing, I'm just piping some simple wheels on the cart. And I'm going to also add details to the awning. I'm just adding a piped line between those two color sections, and then I'm adding some ivory pom-poms on the scallops just to give this a little bit of extra cute factor. We're almost done. We're just gonna add a couple of stems to those apples that are in the foreground. I'm using my light brown icing with tip number 1.5 to keep those stems nice and small. Now this cookie is cute enough and you can certainly stop here, but if you want to pipe some lettering on the top for apples, I am using a projector. You can find this free download with this graphic on the link of the blog post below. You can either use a copy cake, which I'm using here. I printed out that image of the word apples and I just clipped it into the projector and piping the letters, or you can use a digital projector. I also have a digital file for you to download and use in your Pico projector. I'm using a tip number 1.5 to keep the lettering nice and thin and small on that awning. Let's take a look at the apple butter. Now again, we're getting a little creative with our cookie cutters. I'm actually using the new Honey Pot cookie cutter from Ann Clark to create this design. I do wanna add a label to this jar, and so I'm using a small oval to trace that shape so that I can outline the oval using the red piping icing. Now, if you don't have a mini oval cookie cutter, you can always cut one out of paper and just simply trace paper onto your cookie. Flood in that gold apple butter color on the jar and allow that to dry. Then come back in and flood the fabric on the top. We're going to give this a little bit of a plaid look. So once I have that ivory flooded in, I'm using the red flood icing and I'm adding diagonal stripes. This just gives a little bit of interest to the fabric on the top of the jar. I'm going to flood in that red label and then we'll put this cookie in front of the fan to dry for about an hour before we pipe the details. I'm going to add a scallop at the edge of the fabric and a little bow on the top using the dark brown icing. To make this bow, I'm just gonna pipe two loops and then using some strong hand pressure at the top, I'm gonna squeeze and then ease out to create that little ribbon look. Now I'm adding 
the label with a piped line using the ivory icing and tip number two, and you can clean up that little seam at the bottom using your scribe. Now this might be something that you could pipe by hand, but if you are using a projector, again, I've made this graphic available for download on the blog post. Use the link below. You can either print out the graphic and use it in your copy cake, or you can download it to use it in your digital projector. I'm using a tip 1.5 just to keep those letters thin and individual. It's always helpful to size down when you're piping text on cookies so that you don't get overwhelmed and your letters don't blend into each other. I hope you guys had a bushel of fun watching this new tutorial. If you're looking to recreate these cookies, definitely check out that kit on flowerbox.com. Of course, I would love to see what you make, so please do share photos. You can email me or you can tag me at the flowerbox shop. I would love to see what you make. That's all for today. Until next time, happy decorating.